160. He's gone. What's up, guys? Max Maxworks here, and today we're gonna start part one of our forge build. And so, as you search around YouTube, for those of you who are interested in metalworking, you're gonna find a lot of videos with the words forge and foundry in them. A forge is an actual like unit, a thing that you use to work with metal. Basically, superheats the metal to either the point where it becomes liquid or simply the point where it becomes malleable. And I put things in perspective. Aluminum melts at something like 12 or 1300 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, steel begins to melt at something like 3000 degrees Fahrenheit. And these are rough numbers I didn't like. And what we're going to do is we are going to make a forge that will allow us to melt down aluminum. And now you might say, well, what's the big deal? Why do you want to melt down aluminum cans or whatever? Well, scrap values aren't worth anything anymore. And so I end up with a lot of aluminum scrap. Frames, swing arms, uh, stuff like that, that doesn't have a whole lot of uh, commercial value for me to sell. So I end up, it ends up taking a giant pile in my backyard. So I've finally gotten around and what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a forge that will allow me to cut it up melt it down into pure number A1 aluminum ingots. And those ingots and then can be cast, they can be sold. There's a number of uh, things that you can do with the ingots that you can't really do with the raw material, with the uh, with the frame and stuff like that. So I went on Craigslist and bought two of these guys. This is a standard 15 pound propane tank, same thing that comes with your grill. Uh, and I actually bought two of these for 20 bucks. Um, I would have preferred to buy one of the larger units, but I couldn't find one cheaply. And so I just bought two of these smaller ones. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this as the base for our forge. We're going to cut the top off of this, uh, use a middle section out of the other one to make this a little taller. We're going to use refractory cement, create insulation inside. And it's going to be cold fired, so we're going to put a bunch of coal down there. We're going to have a tube that blows a bunch of hot air, a bunch of air into there and keep uh, the temperature up. And inside there will be a crucible, and into the crucible we will drop our pieces of aluminum. The crucible will melt them down, and then we will be able to skim off the junk and produce A1 ingots. A few boilerplate things before we get started. Uh, propane tanks, this contains a combustible gas inside of it uh, that is under pressure. So the last thing on earth that you want to do is cut into this with like a plasma cutter or even a grinding wheel because you're going to set off a spark, it's going to ignite inside, there's going to be an explosion and you're going to get hurt. So here in a minute the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to take this valve off and fill this with water. Now propane is denser than air, which means if you take the valve off, all the propane is not going to rush out into the atmosphere. It's going to do the exact opposite, it's going to sit in there. But water is considerably denser than propane, and so if we fill it up with water, it's going to displace all the propane out into the atmosphere. So there's kind of your, your boilerplate thing. Do not cut into this or any other uh, container designed to hold compressed gas, uh, flammable gas, or flammable liquid, or anything, because it's bad and it'll blow up in your face. Well, there we go. We got our regulator out. Um, basically what I did was I took a grinding wheel and I cut these off, or a cutting wheel rather, cut these tabs off from this upper part right here. And that allowed me to bend this out of the way and get this massive pipe wrench on to the regulator along with a sledgehammer, basically impacted it loose. And so now we can do the other tank and get this guy filled with water and we can figure out where we're going to section everything. So there we go, we got our two tanks marked up. And so this one was marked at 11 inches from the ground. This one was marked at 11 and a quarter and three inches from the ground. Uh, because this one is going to be our, our middle piece tank and this is going to be our foundation and our lid. Okay, so here's kind of the drawing on our whiteboard of what it is that we're actually going to build. So this is our bottom of our first tank. And these are basically just going to be legs made out of angle iron or square tube or whatever just to hold it in place. There's going to be a square tube receiver welded in the middle of the bottom allowing us to put a pedestal in also using square tube and a piece of flat stock. This right here is our crucible. That is uh, where the material is going to be melted down in. Here there's going to be three inches of solid refractory cement all around the outside. On here there's going to be like five or six to seven inches right in here and that's going to be space for all of our coals. There's going to be an air feed right here, a fan of some sort, like a hair dryer or a blower. That's going to blow air in here and superheat these coals. And then this right here is going to be our second tank that we're going to weld together to give us our additional height. And then up here we're going to use one of the tops of the tanks and uh, we're going to fill that inside with refractory cement as well and we're going to weld a little tube that goes from that top hole uh, because otherwise this will build pressure and then explode so you got to have a place for all the heat and pressure to blow off through the top 
And then obviously we're gonna add some handles so that the uh, top is removable so that we can drop material in. And so basically the way it is, you put, you get everything ready, you fire up your coals, uh, you put the crucible down there, you cover the top and you let it heat up. And once it reaches operating temperature, you can start removing this and just dropping pieces of aluminum in here. And as they melt down, they're gonna fill up the crucible at which point you will <coughs> remove the crucible, get the spatter off the top, all the uh, impurities and stuff in the metal, and then you'll pour out your ingots into some sort of uh, cooling tray. People use um, muffin tins, we're probably gonna make our own, but that's basically the gist of it. So for those of you who are curious, that is what burning propane tanks look like. That one's already almost gone out, and I literally lit these just a minute ago, so they were completely, totally empty. Now, for those of you who are stupid and think that, oh, we burnt all the propane off, it's fine, we can just cut into it empty, and don't fill it up with water, here's a simple test that you can do to prove to the entire world that you're a moron. When you fill this up with water, and unfortunately the camera couldn't really catch it, but you know that sight you get uh, from car exhaust where everything gets kind of wavy from the heat, but it's not really heat, it's just refraction of gas in the atmosphere? As you fill this up with water, all of a sudden you will get a heat cloud like that for the refraction right above it which shows you that you've expelled a ton of displaced a ton of propane out of this jug just by filling it with water even though we burnt it not you know five minutes ago so please 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 make sure that you fill this up with water before you attempt to cut it finally i'm going to be wearing gloves i'm going to be wearing safety glasses i'm going to be wearing my safety glass shield thingy and we're going to go nice and slow thought which is generally kind of a dangerous thing for me but since we're building <coughs> since we're adding this on top of that I figured let's buy ourselves another inch get a little bit of this lip and this lip will go into the bottom of that over there and it'll help us center this vertically weld it into place get a nice solid welded seam all the way around and then when we fill the inside with refractory cement it's not gonna matter if there's a little bump here because the cement is gonna be smooth on the inside so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna cut this on the upper line and not the lower line. A couple of things I'd recommend just real quick. Uh, first of all, when you're cutting on an angle like this, what you wanna do is you wanna keep your grinder parallel with the uh, surface of your, your work surface, like in this case, the table. And don't try to do this and follow it around because that's gonna end up being a pain in the ass. What you wanna do is you wanna cut in let this be an angle and just cut in and smoothly cut all the way across and that way you get a nice smooth cut. So now that we're done grinding and wire wheeling everything, you can see there's a huge difference between wire wheeled, not wire wheeled, and then obviously here's our cylinder. And so you might say, you know, okay, you're just doing that to make it look pretty, like who gives a shit? But the truth is, the more impurities you get off, the easier and cleaner your welds are going to be and the easier and better the concrete is going to bind uh, to the metal structure and that will ensure a longevity of your concrete <coughs> and of your project so you really want to take the time just a few minutes get everything super duper clean all right well it's time to start welding and so we got everything set up here and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to weld in this bottom piece and all i'm going to do is basically just center it on that circle and weld it in and now you might be looking at this going, Max, what the hell, man? You got like a thousand dollars worth of cool ass tag welding equipment in your garage. Why are you out here with a hundred dollar welder? The first is based on a recommendation of a trusted colleague, I have moved and I've bought this. This is a Washington Alloys flux core wire. I've never used it before, but you know, he raved about it. And so I really want to give it a go. The second reason is that a lot of people that watch my channel, right, I'm not a professional fabricator, I'm not Chucky2009, this isn't what I do for a living, I just, the guy that likes to build cool shit, and I know a lot of you are just guys that like to build cool shit, and not everybody's got a ton of money to go out and buy professional TIG welding equipment and whatnot, so when I do a project that requires, you know, precision and strength of welds and so on and so forth, you know, yeah, I bust out the TIG. But whenever I plan these projects, I always uh, try to do them in such a way that they can be replicated as cheaply as possible. 
uh, by folks that don't have a whole lot of money or a whole lot of space to keep all this stuff. And so for a project like this, a $100 flux core welder is going to more than get the job done. These are really thin materials. There's not a whole lot of magical, you know, strength, integrity, blah, blah, blah going on. You can basically attack it with whatever kind of welder you got. A stick welder, a MIG welder, flux core, 100 bucks. It's all plenty. Um, you know, I'll use things like band saws and my table saw and whatnot to keep the pace, but really... This entire project is designed to be done with a four and a half inch angle grinder and a hundred dollar welder. So with that in mind, let's get to putting this shit together. Now for those of you who are curious, I got the welder set up on its maximum power setting. Feed rate is around five, five and a half. Uh, we're going to see how well that, that does here. So and this right here is one of the ways you can know that you're getting good penetration. You know, when your weld is running a bead along the outside of this kind of metal on the back side of here, we know that we're getting good penetration into the bucket and I can see I'm getting good penetration into, uh, into that piece of metal. I don't know how well the camera's going to be able to catch that. <laughs> So there you go, there it is, nice and welded all around. And I remember this is gonna get filled in with cement, so we're not really super worried about this moving anywhere. But it is nice that it's welded in place. And like I said, you can see we got really good penetration everywhere. I'm really pretty happy with this Washington Alloys uh, wire. And so the next thing we gotta do is we got to uh, put together our uh, little pedestals real quick. And that way we can just set them aside for later till we need them. There we go. Got it all nice and welded out. And you can see we got good penetration on the back side again because it's burnt through. Same on this guy. Nice. And so I don't know if this is super duper hot still. But basically, that'll drop in like that. And remember, this will be filled with cement up to here. Lots of coals around here. And then our crucible will just sit right on top of that. Uh, and now we should have plenty of space plenty of space uh, for our crucible right here because crucible is going to be about six six and a half inches tall and uh, pretty wide and then we're going to have a cover right here and you want to have a little bit of an air gap here as well uh, so that <coughs> looks like it turned out pretty good so I left last night and went to go party and it rained so I had to spend the first part today cleaning everything back off again with the wire wheel but now, as you can see, again, we have this all welded up, right? So we got our, our base in there. And next thing we gotta do is we gotta figure out, I measured off three inches. Uh, this is actually five inches up off the ground to accommodate for about an inch of spacer down there. And this is gonna be the bottom of our flow tube, right? And so you want your air coming in somewhere near the bottom of your coals. It doesn't have to be all the way on the floor, but you want it to be near the bottom of your coals. And we're going to be using this old exhaust uh, tailpipe header thing, whatever this was. I think this was off a uh, ZX6R. But the nice thing about this is it's stainless, so it's not going to rust. It's about the right diameter, and it's got this cool slip fitting end on it, as you guys can see, which will make it a little easier for me to uh, to fit a uh, blower onto the end of this. The other nice thing about it is because it's curved, it doesn't take up a whole lot of space outside. But it is a little bit on the long side and that's going to help isolate the heat so we don't melt uh, our hair dryer or whatever we're using. So this pipe has a diameter of what? About 48 millimeters or 1.9 inches. So it's probably like a standard 2, two inch pipe. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to cut a hole in here, feed this through and we're going to have this sitting uh, basically just inside kind of the uh, two inch mark. So the cement will end somewhere right here and won't leave a whole lot of uh, exposed steel. So the next thing I bought for about eight bucks at Home Depot was this. This is a uh, quick crete um, tube and what it's done is you dig a hole in the ground and you pour concrete inside of this 
and then you can uh, destroy the tube later if you need to or just leave it in the ground it helps you pour a nice cylinder um, we're actually gonna be using the opposite right we're gonna be using the outside of this as a mold and unfortunately at least the home depot i went to these were sold in 12 inch and 8 inch diameters and we need a 10 inch diameter so i bought the 12 um, as you can see the 12 will actually slip inside of here just barely but what we're going to do is we're going to mark it off uh, at the right height basically this plus a few extra inches make a vertical slit and then move it down to a nominal uh, 10 inch uh, size on the outside and then that will give us our pouring form so that we can um, pour concrete around the outside and mock up our uh, air pipe and so that's what we're going to do to get this cut apart is just cardboard I am probably just going to take a hacksaw to it well you know what they say no good plan survives the battlefield um, my my 10 inch tube has now become a 9 inch tube and quite frankly if uh, I wasn't trying to fight for every uh, inch of space I could get inside of this tank I would have been better off with just an 8 inch tube so if you're if you're looking at smaller projects you know I was interested in melting down bigger pieces of aluminum and you're using these propane tanks I would say just go and get the 8 inch uh, tube and don't even waste your time with this uh, however if you do get a 12 inch tube and you want to go for like a 9 or something or 9 and a half or whatever um, what I found is using an air stapler to run staples along this edge is the closest way to get a good seam obviously we're going to leave a seam in the concrete inside of there but to me that's really kind of a small price to pay remember we're making this out of an old fucking propane tank so I don't really care what it looks like that center's in there quite nicely and so now all we really got to do is uh, cut our hole and measure it in and what we're going to do is we're going to back weld that tube in place to make sure that this piece right here that we cut flush is going to ride up as close as it can right up against this so there we go we got everything set up <coughs> grab my dark glasses here real quick another nice thing is since this is a cylinder make sure you put some stuff around it so it doesn't roll around on you There you go. Um, obviously, we need to do a little bit of fine tuning, but uh, makes it a lot easier when you just blow out a piece of metal like that. So, in preparation to pour our base level of mortar, I've put in these guys, and as you can see, these little rebar pieces will actually reach up past where the mortar is and help join um, the side pour to the base. And all I did was I took them and put them in a vise and just kind of hammered on them. So they bend a little bit so they're not sticking out. <clears throat> but these little pieces of rebar are like $1.50 a piece at Home Depot. And we're going to use them to make a couple of things. So just a few little pieces. We're just going to tack weld them in. Don't need to be heavily welded in because uh, the whole point here is that the mortar is going to hold them in place. And they're going to help join the mortar pieces. There we go. Nothing really special. Uh, we're not going to put one on this side because we've got the pipe coming in. Um, and we don't really need it. So I just cut three of them. But uh, yeah, nothing special. Just nice and tacked in there and shit ain't going anywhere next step is to put in this pipe and this distance in here between the tube and the outside of the or the uh, inside of the propane tank needs to be one and a half inches and so probably the thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the camera down uh, and use both hands to kind of hold it in place and then tack the pipe in then once the pipe is tacked in uh, it's pretty much centered and it is starting to rain so this is going to be the end of part one. Uh, part two will get posted probably in a couple of weeks. And in that you will see me finish up all of the metal work and pour all the concrete. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. It's going to be an awesome project and we're going to melt some aluminum.